Yes. Uh, all right. Good. I am actually on the grave with ten USD pair. Now, the first thing I'm going to do in analyzing a particular market is this. What is the first thing? I'm going to, since we are already at the end of the month, I will go through every chart at the monthly time frame and look at how the month closed. It makes my work very, very easy. Now, this is Euro USD monthly. I want to know how it closed. And looking at how this closed, it is rejecting from a moving average level. Now, I will pause. I will go down to Baby 10 USD. Baby 10 USD also monthly actually is not rejecting, but it's actually responding to an opposition bar and a range for the past one, two, three, four, five, five. Two. Then USD JPY monthly also, monthly also is responding to a range match in the past five months. I'll go down to USD card. Look at what USD card is doing. USD card is being rejected by a particular, by the moving average. Although it has not touched it, but it has been rejected. So I'll hold that one. What am I trying to look for? I'm trying to look for one thing, a breakout trade. I'm trying to look for a particular pair that break out from the monthly line. I'm getting my point. I'm looking for a breakout pair. I'm looking for a breakout trade. Why a breakout trade? A breakout trade will be very, very easy for me. It will be very easy for me because I'll be able to understand the next momentum of the market. So, card JPY monthly, I'll also go down. No breakout, or JPY monthly. I'll keep selecting from the monthly time frame. There is none yet. All right, only grey between odd. Only grey between odd. And the next one is what? Okay, only grey between odd is giving me a breakout trade. If I want to analyze this, I will put my target. I will say, okay, since we have a breakout from this zone, yeah, All right, I will say this is my target area for the month. So I'll be looking for 1,900 pips from Great Britain Old. Not for August, but for either two or three months or four months, whatever. So what will I be expecting now? I'll be expecting what? A retracement back to this place. I'll be expecting a retracement back to my daily time frame moving average. Now, if I get a retracement, then I will not write everything up to the top. It's as simple as that. When analyzing why there's what we call MS. O W like a major sign of weakness. So I'll be looking for price to this monthly time frame moving average or drop lower to the weekly time frame moving average. Like this. Then start reversing back up.
Now, this is going to be my analysis on Brave with Tehoe. Very short and simple, because it is based on what? It is simply based on a breakout strategy. Now, if I want to confirm that the course has been built, I will have to go down to the mobility time frame and look for my divergence. Look at it. We have a divergence here. There's a divergence. So tell you that at the end of the month, we saw a breakout from Great Britain odd on the monthly time frame. So automatically, Great Britain odd is, is bullish for the month. Great Britain odd is bullish for the month. Now I am done with that analysis. Now, if you look at it from Great Britain odd, you will notice something that what odd is now weak because Great Britain is stronger than it based on our market prediction. Based on our market prediction, I will have to understand that for Great Britain odd to give me this particular signal, that means something is either going to happen to all USD. What is that? All USD is going to become so weak. So I might want to now focus on analyzing every odd pairs and look at where the weakness will come from. Are you getting my point? Yes, sir. Good. Now, look at it. I've used the bias of Great Britain odd being a bullish to now confirm that odd pairs will look bearish. They'll be weak going into the month. So I will now want to go and look for more odd pairs and see if something like that is going to happen. And how will I look at it? I've come to odd JPY. I will apply my MACD here to take note of something. Let me use RSI. To take note of something, what is that? There's a hidden bearish divergence here. Price is going down. But oscillator is, is actually going higher. So what will I do? Automatically, I understand that what? There is going to be a divergence at this place on the monthly time frame to prove to us that surely, 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 all JPY is going to go further down. Now, how am I going to do that? I have already spot my divergence on the monthly time frame. Remember, this was the I did talk about this how to trade using the hidden divergence. When I was telling people why I don't use the hidden divergence. So what I will now do now is this. I will come down to my daily time frame, look for what divergence. Do we have a divergence? We want our divergence is what they will use to build it, start and building a course. Now there's a divergence here. Now after divergence, do we have a break in the market structure? Now this is the market structure zone. Yes, and we have a break in the market structure. There's a break of market structure. There's a break of market structure. So automatically, what I'll be expecting from odd US JPY now is what? More weakness. More weaknesses. And that weakness will not come until when I see a breakout here. I need to have a daily breakout at this zone a break, daily breakout from this zone for me to continue the bearish fall of all JPY. Now, another thing you have to understand is this. In creating this roadmap, since I already know that there is a weakness, a bearish continuous weakness from all JPY, I am now going to look for, this is my first target. Now, this is my second target. Now, how will price come to this target when there's an obstacle, a moving average obstacle here? Yeah. 
That is the first thing I want to think of. Now, how will price come to this level? This is what is going to happen. Price is going to come down, touch the moving averages, then do something like this. Hop. And drop. This is what it's going to do. Why touching that particular market structure level here? See, I switched to the daily time frame because the primary time frame of the month is daily. Now, I expect price to do what? Price is going to go up on touching that moving average zone. It's going to respect the moving average. Go up on this daily. Then it will now form, remember I talked about this, a market structure region here. A particular region where we are not going to look to enter from. And that region might come from this place around here, depending on we how where the particular bar that touches the moving average closes. Now, what I'll be looking to do for OJPY is this. Is this. I'll be looking for a breakout from this daily zone. A breakout here. Then price will drop. Touch. Price will now touch the monthly moving averages here. Yeah? Now, in touching the monthly moving averages, I'll be expecting price to create a course. And that course might be moving up directly to the weekly time frame. Now, after creating a course here, yeah, then I will not expect it to do what? Create another course here. Yeah. Create another course at this particular top here, yeah. then drop. This is what I'll be expecting price to do. This is what I'll be expecting price to do. Create another course and what? And drop. Now that is that on all JPY. Since I analyzed all JPY, and now I now know that all is going to be weak. So what will I do? I will come down to my monthly time frame. Now look at all USD is doing the same thing that we are going to predict on all JPY. We said it's going to touch these moving averages. Now in touching these moving averages, something is going to happen. Now what is that? We need to see a rise in the markets. We need to see this level be rejected. This particular level be rejected. Yeah. Rejecting price. And how will that time come? It will come at the end of the week. If and only if we have a break in the market structure level. If and only if they created a course. Now they've been creating the course here by forming a divergence. But the only thing remaining is what? A break in the market structure, which is here. Which is here. So I actually want price to do what? To go back up here. Go back up here and touch this weekly time frame moving average four hours. Then from there, form another course. And drop. This is exactly what I'll be expecting in all USD. Now we are done with anything that has to do with old. We know that all USD is now bearish. What we want to now do is what? Follow our roadmap. And that is for odd JPY. Now, the next thing I want to look for is this. For odd JPY to fall, that means JPY will strengthen, right?
For all JPY to fall, that means JPY will have strength and all will be weak, right? Yes, sir. Good. Now, I will now want to look at JPY strength. When looking at JPY strength, I will come down to CSF JPY. I will come down to CSF JPY. I will come down to CHF JPY. Now, in coming down to CHF JPY, they already have a breakout from this particular top. Look at this top has been holding price for over. Since 2013. Since 2013. Since 2017, rather. This particular place has been holding price. And look at it. On the fourth of this year, April, we have a breakout. Now, after the breakout, what we see is what? We now have a retest. Now, exactly what happened here? Look at what happened here. We have a breakout. Then <laughs> price went higher and dropped. Going above the daily moving averages, giving us a style two entry for breakout and touching the weekly time frame. Now, what is here is what we want in gravity between odd. Exactly the same thing. We need a reversal, a retracement, then we will now continue taking price higher. That is exactly what we will looking for. To answer your question, look at this gap between USD repeat. We actually started selling from this bottom. Yeah. And I added more position to it. When I have a break of my market structure in four hours, I added more position here. Now, when I add my position here, this area become my stop loss region. Yeah. Over 118 pips. So if I want to risk any amount, any percent of my market, of my capital, I'm going to include it into consideration. This particular pips that is there, over 120. So if I'm risking how many percent of my account, I will put it inside my lot size. In order with that, I'll be free with the trade I've taken. I'll be free with the trade I'm taking. So with that, I'm not using bigger risks or not. I can swing the trade. Now, Great Britain USD, let me analyze this, then we'll close for today. I'll entertain more questions. Then maybe at the end of every day, Monday we do analysis, Tuesday we do analysis, follow up. So I'll be able to follow up this analysis with you. Look at, look at this game between USD. It was rejecting from this zone, but why rejecting, rejecting from this zone? First of all, we need to know if this there is a breakout of the daily time frame to say we are seeing a, a daily retracement. There is no breakout. There is no breakout at all. Now, since there's no breakout of market structure, what are we going to be looking for? We'll be looking out for Is there a break in the four hour market structure? This is the four hour market structure here. This zone. Now, at the end of the month, there is no break of four hour market structure. We go to daily. Is there a break in the daily market structure? At the end of the month. At the end of the month, there is no break of the daily market structure. There is no break here. So what will I analyze? I will now analyze this particular opposition bar. Since we have an opposition bar on the daily time frame, 
I will analyze to see if that particular bar can give us a retracement down to this place. If it can, then I will come to my one hour and see, do we have a close in the one hour market structure? That's what I'll be looking out for. Is there a divergence and is there a close in one hour market structure? All right, we have people. I all right, we have people. Our market is doing this. Okay. Now there's a close in the market structure. There's a close in market structure. So what I'll be expecting is I'll be expecting price to do something like this. Go up from a divergence, a course to push price further down to this point. Now, if price is still going to go lower, it will do the same thing. It will go up, maintain market structure, All right, thank you for waiting. My service is fluctuating. Now, like I said, they are going to do the same thing here. Now, you ask me, why did I choose this zone? It's very simple. That zone is the daily time frame market structure. Daily time frame moving average. Now, they will do the same thing there. Then they will drop price to this other block. Now, if at all they want to push price further down, they will create another course and push it further down. This is what they will do. It's exactly what they are going to do. That is for USD, Great Britain USD. Now we have um, USD JPY. If at all there is going to be a drop in just JPY, we already see this price has gone up. Now we need it to come down. And what we need need to come down there, we need a what a four hour divergence. We need a four hour divergence with price still maintaining market structure. This is our market structure region. Now, what am I looking for? I'm looking, actually looking for, this is a decision point, a key zone. This point is a key zone. It is some points. Now, I'll be expecting price to come back up to this zone. Up like this. Form a bigger divergence course. And drop price lower. This is it for USD JPY. is USD cash. We have a rejection from this zone. Now, the only thing that will make price shoot back up to this place is if and only if we have a breakout in the market structure in one hour. We have a one hour break in market structure at the end of the day. And this is the market structure region here. Yeah, and there's no market structure break yet. Now we need a break here, a break in market structure at the end of the day to target up for USD card. Then after the target up, we now cannot decide if price is going to drop down or price is still going to go back up. All these things are the way analyzed roadmap, very simple and straightforward. But like I said, we'll be doing analysis on the end of the day, Tuesday, we'll be doing it to see what price is doing in reacting to our analysis zone, our levels. And from there, we pick on our trades and trade them. 
So this uh, is simply how I do my analysis. Except I want to now start doing beautification, like adding a to it, adding white cover and the rest. But in a nutshell, this is how I do my analysis. Why? Because I didn't know where price is going to react to. I didn't know where it's supposed to go to. I didn't know where I'm going to meet it. I didn't know what to do and how to, how to do it. That is why it is very short and simple for me. Hope you understand what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Don't worry, when it's on, at the end of Monday, we'll come back in the night around 10. Analyze at the end of Monday close, what happened to Monday? Where is price correctly based on our, our analysis and our roadmap? That's what we are going to be doing. So with that, I believe everybody will catch up. We're able to see how the market moves. So this is um, 11.05. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I actually came very late. Uh, I went to a church prayer and I'm just coming back. That's why I did not start the class very early. So thank you. I appreciate it. Triple book up, pressures and my uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, and others that came and went back offline. I really appreciate it. So, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Like I said, on Monday, we'll, we'll come back to this same analysis and analyze and see what happened to trade. Who happened to the peer? Why did they move? What happened? Have they done what we wanted to do? Why did it move on Monday? That's what we'll be checking. So, please, thank you.